Raging Bolt keeps winning big tournaments. Of all the new Paradox Pokemon added in the Indigo Disc, Raging Bolt has been the most consistent, with it being on multiple teams in the format, as well as it rising in day one usage at the Utrecht Regional at the time of recording this. This Pokemon keeps dominating, with its impressively high stats and access to many solid moves such as Snarl, Thunderclap, which is an electric type Sucker Punch, and a handful of items that all work on it, it has so many different options for play. The team we're featuring today was made by Toler Webb, who won the Knoxville Regional Championship with it. This team is a solid balanced team with access to Rain from Tornadus that not only boosts the power of Water Pond, but also protects Goldango from fire type attacks. The Bolt on this team is running an Assault Vest with Snarl to provide support while also being able to take Take hits and still putting out big damage. So let's hop onto the rank ladder and show why this Pokemon has such high usage rate in Regulation F. So in game one, I'm up against a Gouging Fire team, and I think immediately that I want to lead Tornadus and Urshifu. The reason for this is because typically these teams like to lead Gouging Fire and King Gambit and be able to get Howl off to allow King Gambit to start doing big damage. Urshifu not only puts pressure on the King Gambit, but also onto the Gouging Fire by being able to do big damage with Wicked Blow or Close Combat. Tornadus is nice because I get the speed control and am able to deal with the booster energy speed on Gouging Fire while also being able to set Rain up for subsequent turns for my Ogre Pawn. Then I bring Raging Bolt because Raging Bolt is going to be able to do big damage into a lot of this team, being able to hit things like Gouging Fire for Draco Meteor damage, as well as the other Pokemon just being able to use Thunderclap is huge into this particular matchup. And then finally, I round the team out with Ogre Pawn. And while Ogre Pawn can be a bit dicey here because of the Chen Pao as well as the opposing Ogre Pawn, as well as the Rillaboom, I think it's still a decent bring into the Gouging Fire as well as the King Gambit if I can get Rain set. Gouging Fire, King Gambit lead. Okay. No shock there. No shock there. They are going to be boosted. Booster speed. Makes sense. Tailwind. And I think I am going to go for the Terra here. I'm going to go for the Terra on Dershifu. I want to put as much damage out as I can this turn. And we'll kind of go from there. We'll play it as we see fit. Okay, what, what are they bringing in? What are they bringing in? Rillaboom. Okay. Rillaboom comes in. We've got Protect on both our Pokemon, so I'm here for that. We're going to tear it dark. I can definitely still see them going for Howl this turn. Tailwind goes up. Does this allow us to outspeed? Yes. Yes, it does. That's good to know. Boom. Good damage. There's the Howl. Alright, so this turn, I think I just go for Bleak Winds. And I'm going to go ahead and protect Urshifu this turn. I'm going to go for Bleak Wind and I'm going to protect Urshifu. That's going to save me from a fake out, which is coming. And then that saves me from like a heat crash or something from their gouging fire. It allows us to get good chip off on a Rillaboom. Not a ton of chip. Must be assault vested. Another howl goes off. But we can go for another bleak win now. And we can Sucker Punch the Rillaboom. We can Sucker the Rillaboom. And that should put it in range of a Bleak Wind. If it doesn't KO. Yep. Okay, perfect. They didn't swap. That's what we like to see. Rillaboom is now in range of Bleak Wind Storm. They go for Grassy Glide. That is going to put me pretty low. Bleak Wind connects to both. Does it take the double? It does. Nice. Nice. 
Critical hit on a gouging fire. That might have been necessary. Ooh, double crit. Okay. Okay, Torn. Okay, Torn. Wow. All right. So think about King Gambit left. We need to get our rain down this turn. That needs to be the number one priority. Getting our rain down is going to be very big. And then Fluttermain comes in. Okay. Not Tailwind. Rain Dance. Good lord. I'm glad I, I caught that. So. I think they Terra the Fluttermain. We need to put out as much damage as we can onto the King Gambit. As much damage as we can onto King Gambit. Now, the reason we need to put out as much damage as we can onto King Gambit is because King Gambit can cause a lot of problems for uh, my um, for my backline. And I knew they were probably going to go for the Terra Fairy. Going for the Terra Fairy onto the Fluttermain weakens my Wicked Blow, which means I don't take the KO, and that leaves King Gambit just at full health, and I get nothing out of that turn. So we get a free KO on a King Gambit, and that puts us in a great position, even if they go for the um even if they go for the dazzling gleam this turn i'm able to just kind of deal with that very easily the subsequent turn with my uh ogre pawn as well as my uh raging bolt oh torn actually survives that i was not expecting so torn actually hangs on tailwind's gone so what i want to do is actually get raging bolt in and that might seem silly. Like, you might be like, why are you, why are you bringing Raging Bolt into this? Um, it's actually going to be very beneficial when I hit this. And do I outspeed this Fluttermane? I might outspeed the Fluttermane. Is that a gamble I want to take? I'm going to go for the Snarl. I think it's a gamble I'm willing to take. They just give us the battle regardless. Okay, GG. I was willing to take the gamble because I think I can still take... A choice specs D gleam that turn which is likely what they were locked into um and I think I'm able to take that and then get them a minus one for the subsequent turn when my ogre pawn comes in to clean that game up the next team I'm up against is a rain team that I need to be cautious about I do think bringing my ogre pawn is going to be beneficial because they may potentially set the rain for me but I do have to be cautious because they not only have landorus to deal with my raging bolt as well as my gold dango but they also have the blood moon ursa luna that is going to be able to help deal with that scenario as well however I do still think that gold dango can play fairly nicely into this especially if I get tailwind up early and enable to hit a couple good make it rains that is going to do big damage into this team and terra fairy will protect me from super effective damage I lead this with torn because like I said I want to get tailwind up but then I bring my raging bolt and my ogre pawn in the back ogre pawn has some decent play into their raging bolt as well as their ursa luna and their lando so that gives me a lot of options in that regard and then the raging bolt is just going to be able to provide some snarl pressure into a lot of these pokemon that are special attackers as well as provide some coverage with the thunderbolt as well as the thunderclap all right this could be an interesting start here we'll have to see what they lead Okay. Okay. So I think we just go for make it rain. We just have to do as much damage this turn as possible. Here comes the Terra on their part. We just have to get as much damage off as we possibly can this turn. So we need to just go for make it rains. Now, there's a good chance they're running a fast Blood Moon Bear because there was no Trick Room Setter on their team. So we got to watch out for that. That could definitely be a fast bear. Make it rains going to connect. Good damage on the both. Are we going to see the Blood Moon come off? We are. Are they normal gem? Yeah, normal gem moon. Wait. Wait. They went into Tornadus, though. I'm not so sure about that one. 
I'm not so sure about that one. Well, I feel pretty comfy just bringing in Raging Bolt now. Uh, looking at the rest of their team, I'm more than comfortable just going for a Snarl and a Make It Rain here. Snarl in case they swap in any of their other Pokemon. Make It Rain just to do damage. Take KOs. Rain Dance. I'm cool with that too. I'm very okay with that. Because now we have Ogre Pond in the back with Rain Dance up, and I'm here for that. So now their Tailwind's also gone. Let's see what they bring in. There's the Lando. Okay. I think I'm down to just Snarl here. And get in Ogre Pond. I can get an Ogre Pond. I can Snarl. Going for the Terra could be risky here. I'm not going to lie. Could definitely be risky here. Just because of the fact that uh, going for the Terra means I can't Terra my Ogre Pond. Which could be bad if I take a Sludge Bomb. There's the Sandseer Storm. Ogre Pond can eat that. We get the Snarl off to weaken the Blood Moon Bear. And there's the Hyper Voice. Let's see how well we take that. Alright, so Ogre Pond's definitely in a bad way. I think we have to go for Draco Meteor here. Um, what's my speed on that? I very seriously doubt we're outspeeding. Very seriously doubt we're outspeeding the um Lando. So I think I go for follow me. I think I have to go for follow me. Oh, they swap. Darn, we could have attacked. We could have attacked. That's such good damage. It's not going to be enough, though. Blood Moon goes off. Into the Ogre Pond, so we're still okay there. Tailwind's gone. Their Tailwind's gone. Okay. So I think the ideal play here is we go for a T-Bolt onto the Blood Moon Bear and we go for a Shadow Ball. Vacuum Wave. Okay, was not expecting that, but that's cool. There's the Ivy Cudgel. Yikes. Fully expecting a Follow Me. So that really sucks because we could have just Thunderclapped. Could have just Thunderclapped, so that's tragic. Down goes Blood Moon Bear. Alright. This gets incredibly tricky. They have one more turn of rain. I think we have to go for a Draco Meteor here. 
Uh, and we have to go for a protect on Goldango. I think that's our only play. It's our only play. Sandseer Storm, gonna hit. I don't know that we take this. We do, just barely. Just barely. Draco goes off. That's good damage. Rain stops. I think we have to go for another Draco. And we just click make it rain and hope they miss. They don't miss either. Darn. We had to hope for a miss. We had to hope for the miss. Oh, such a close battle. Such a close battle. The final team we're up against has Alola Ninetales, which means that this team does have some form of weather control, which means I'm definitely bringing Tornadus in the lead. This not only allows me to play Tailwind for speed control, but also set Rain Dance if they decide to lead the Alola Ninetales. I'm going to lead Goldango with this as well, because Alola Ninetales does not like taking to make it rain, and this gives me a lot of opportunity to either bait out a Terrastalization or just set up Nasty Plot in turn one. Then in the back, I'm bringing Raging Bolt and Ogre Pond because I plan to set the rain. Ogre Pond's just going to play very nicely, especially into that Lando as well as Incineroar, and then Raging Bolt is going to be good as potential coverage option to the other members of this team. I think this lead's pretty solid. Torn and Gold Dango could be pretty good. Okay. We see the Raging Bolt come out. So I think what I need to do is get my Tailwind down. And I think actually using Terra and going for Nasty Plot this turn puts me in a really commanding position. I think that puts me in a really strong position. Because that gives me plus two and allows me to deal with this uh, setup here, the subsequent turn. We'll see if they go for my, tor uh, my Torn this turn. Definitely in the realm of possibility. We go for the Terra for the potential, um, we go for the Terra for the potential, uh, knockoff play, which will be a touch disappointing because it will get rid of my, uh, Metal Coat, which is unfortunate, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. There we go. They go for Snarl. That makes sense. Lair Blitz, actually. Was not expecting that. So I think what I want to do this turn is go for a Protect. Um, and just go for a Shadow Ball into the Raging Bolt. Because I want to try and Protect... Because they have the Alola Ninetales, which leads me to be concerned... For the potential play for them to bring that in and control the weather for the rest of the game. So I kind of want to preserve my, um, kind of want to preserve my torn if possible for that situation alone. So we're going to protect this turn. And we're going to Shadow Ball up. Get some damage off onto that. Likely go for another... Oh, they went for the Parting Shot. Was not expecting that. They go for another Snarl. Could they miss? That would be ideal. They aren't going to miss, though. We take that very well. We're going to see the Special Attack drop. And I think what I want to do now is actually get my Raging Bolt in. And go for another Nasty Plot. I'm not particularly threatened by either of the two Pokemon on the field. Uh, getting Raging Bolt in allows me to take a hit from whatever decides to come in. Uh, if they go for a Flare Blitz, I'm able to take that hit very well. If they go for a Thunderbolt, I'm able to take that very well. So we could see a significant drop in damage on my Raging Bolt, but I think that's okay. Okay, we are going to see the Special Attack drop. That's fine. It's very likely that they just go for another Snarl. Lando's gonna come in. Okay. 
There's a snarl. And this should leave us at plus one special attack. Yes. Okay. Huh. Plus one special attack. How many more turns of Tailwind? We have one more turn of Tailwind. So I think what I want to do actually is get my... Not my Gold Dango. My Tornadus back in. And I'm thinking I want to go for a Make It Rain this turn. I could also go for a Shadow Ball. That is an option. I think it will go for the Shadow Ball. That'll maximize my damage in that spot. Getting the Torn back in is going to protect me from a Sandseer Storm. Okay, here comes the Terra. Terra onto likely their Raging Bolt. Yep, they want to save themselves from a potential Draco Meteor. Oh, they're going for Electric Terra. It still saves them from a Draco Meteor, so that makes sense. Oh, they protected. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That is a fair turn for them. They go for another Snarl. Takes me back to neutral. Tailwind's now gone. Puts us kind kind of an awkward spot. We need to get our Tailwind back up. And I think I protect this turn. I protect this turn. Because at this point, I'm, I'm okay with just letting uh, Tornadus go down. I just need the speed control. They go for the Sludge Bomb. Makes sense. And they go for the T-Bolt. That's actually ideal for us. That's actually ideal for us. So now I want to get in my Ogre Pawn. And what I want to do now is go for double into the uh, Raging Bolt. I double the Raging Bolt because I assume that they protect Lando this turn. Yep. Yep. It's a good read. Good chip. And the Shadow Ball will clean that up. And we didn't take a minus one, which puts us in a very commanding position for the subsequent turn. Excellent. Now, Incineroar likely comes back in. I think it's very, very likely we see Incineroar make a return. Because that'll lower the attack on my Ogre Pawn. Oh, it's actually going to be their Urshifu. That was I, something I was not expecting. But I'm okay with that. Because we go for Ivy Cudgel. And we go for Make It Rain now. Lando's going to swap. I'm okay with that. This is actually a very smart play on their part. I would love to see a crit here. A crit would be amazing. Not quite. No berry? Darn. If they didn't have a berry, make it rain cleans. If they did not have that berry, Make It Rain would clean that up. I don't think Make It Rain cleans it up from that range. No, it doesn't. Okay. So, how many more turns of Tailwind are we working with? This is our last turn of Tailwind. And are we max speed on Ogre Pond? We're not max speed Ogre Pond. So I think what we have to do is go for a subsequent Make It Rain. Oh, that actually doesn't work out in my favor.
I think I actually have to get Raging Bolt in in that slot. And Nasty Plot up this turn. I think that has to be the play. I have to get the Nasty Plot up. They likely go for a Fake Out onto the Ogre Pond slot. Yep. We have to use Raging Bolt to just kind of take these hits. Wow, they actually go for the Wicked Blow into the Goldango, which I was not expecting. So this turn we go for the Thunderclap, and we go for the Make It Rain. We go for the Thunderclap, we go for the Make It Rain. We should be able to take another... Ooh, I don't think we take another Wicked Blow now. I don't think we take another Wicked Blow now. Nice, that's good, Chip. Helping hand on the Rillaboom, not on the Rillaboom, on the Incineroar was something I was not anticipating. That definitely puts me on the back foot. That definitely puts me on the back foot. We can get Ogre Pawn in. Um, now we have to think about our speed tiers and where we're sitting. So I think what I need to do is go for the Thunderclap once more here and go for the hit onto the Incineroar. Okay, they go for the Detect. That's fine. That's fine. We get the Incineroar out. And that brings Lando back in. Kind of puts us in a scary position, admittedly. Kind of puts us in a scary position. I think we have to go for the hit onto... We have to go for the Urshifu. So we need to remove the Urshifu from play. And I think we have to Spiky Shield this turn. I think we have to go for Spiky Shield. We have to get this read right. Sucker Punch, gonna fail. That's huge, that's huge. I don't know why they didn't Wicked Blow. Wow, we got the read right, holy crap. That changes the whole dynamic of this end game. Oh my gosh, we got the read right. So we're gonna take the Urshifu out. All right, so this subsequent turn, what we need to do is go for Snarl, and we need to go for an Ivy Cudgel. Snarl and Ivy Cudgel here. We're faster than their Lando, that's massive. And we just take the KO. Let's go. So the idea was, we Snarl, we lower the special attack of the Lando, they hit the Ogre Pond, potentially KO the Ogre Pond that turn, and then we can land a Draco and hopefully clean the game. Wow, good game.